Hey guys, Arlisha here and welcome to this week's video. Today we are going to be exploring some really lovely watercolors from Belgium. These are the Asaro watercolors and please forgive my non-French pronunciation of everything in this video from this point forward. These videos were sent to me by the owner's husband. The owner herself, Isabella, seems to take a lot of pride in her work and puts a lot of care into making sure that every color offered in this range is specifically crafted. So there are individualized formulas for every color. And when her husband reached out to me and asked if I wanted to try these paints, I was really excited because I had heard of them before. There are a few people here on YouTube who have talked about them and they also are available at Jackson's Art Dot com so I had seen them there and I was very interested but never had the opportunity to try them out myself so I was really really excited to receive them. I received one of their metal tin sets. I think that Jackson's has one metal tin set but there are multiple different variations um, of that tin set with different colors available on their website so you can check those out there as well as individual tubes. So I received a set of 12 colors i think or is it 10 counting 10 colors and three additional colors so i have a total of 13 colors here to share with you it has been a while since we've gotten to sit down together and actually fill a new palette and swatch some colors and just sort of relax in this new watercolor setup way which is always so exciting for me and really really fun and I got a small little palette to put these colors in and this is always such an inspiring thing for me to do. Sometimes if I'm feeling not very inspired or I'm feeling kind of blocked with art, I will just take some paints, even if it's paints I already own, it doesn't have to be buying new watercolors. I'll just take out some tube watercolors and maybe arrange a set I've never put together before or just grab some colors that I don't normally pair and just set up a new little palette, whether it's even just like on a porcelain palette and I just put some, a little bit of each color out or sometimes it's getting the half pans out or a palette like this and making a whole new set and I always find that really inspiring. So having the opportunity to actually set up a new palette and try some lovely new watercolors is just really exciting for me. I'll do my best to find the specific set that I have here and leave a link to it down in the description if you're interested in checking that out. I was so pleased with the range of colors that I was sent. There are a lot of really lovely blues, which I always appreciate. I've mentioned this before, but you'd think I would want to have a wider variety of reds than of blues because of how prominent red is in my work, but I always appreciate a wide variety of blues because there's just so much you can do with variations in those colors. When I was done swatching, the two colors that I was most interested in seeing the difference between were the indigo and the steel blue. I believe the steel blue is PB29, PBR7, so a blue pigment and a brown pigment, as well as a little bit of mica. So I think that color is actually a tiny bit glittery. It's a really subtle effect and I think that I could see it best 
in the actual pan. I think you can see it when I was initially putting the color into its well. And I just love that both of these colors are slightly neutralized bluish tones, but they're so different that indigo has a bit more green, while the steel blue is a little bit more neutral and has some nice granulation. Whenever I want to test out mixing colors for watercolors, I always end up testing out the red and yellow combinations because I know that those are colors that I rely on pretty heavily when I'm painting. The reds in this set are really interesting. There's a scarlet color, which is PR255. I absolutely love that red pigment. It's nice and warm and it mixes beautifully. I also have a perylene maroon, which was so interesting to mix with, as well as a rose color that I believe is PR122, and it's just such a fascinating range of reds. The range of colors I have here is a little bit different. It's very, very comforting to me in some ways, and in other ways it's very different from what I'm used to. So that primary yellow sits in a nice spot for me where it's not too warm, and it's not super, super cool. I like that one a lot, but there isn't really in this set specifically a warm yellow. There's more of a green gold, and it's definitely not the kind of warm yellow that leans closer to orange, which is not something that I use all of the time, but I do really love green gold, especially for mixing with bits of red to neutralize those colors and to still get something that's really nice and warm. So overall, I was just so pleased with the range of colors that I had, and I couldn't resist painting with these paints. I'll leave a list of the names of each of the colors in this set with the pigment numbers, as well as this paper that I use. I've talked about it a lot. It's a Canson hot press paper that's 100% cotton, and it is my absolute favorite paper to paint on, especially this large block that's just so big. I love being able to paint big pieces and use big brush strokes. While working on this painting, I could feel so clearly, this is going to sound like a kind of strange thing to say, but I could really feel that each color, it felt like each color had its own story to tell, and it felt like each one was crafted to be what it is and to act the way it is very well. So the colors were vibrant and mixed together beautifully, and that granulating steel blue was so lovely. The phthalo blue was bright and cool. I loved the greenish undertones in the indigo, and overall each individual color just lended so much to the mixes and left every mixed color feeling unique and beautiful. I really enjoyed working with the paints themselves. They didn't spread too much, like when I would add a bit of water to the edges and try to and try to soften out those edges, the color stayed where I wanted it to go, so it wasn't flowing a ton, but at the same time it wasn't just completely stationary or stagnant. The colors flowed into each other beautifully, and I was really happy with the watercolor textures I was able to achieve. I love having sets of this size, specifically in that 10 to 12 colors range. It makes it feel like the colors working together are this puzzle to unlock, like there's only a limited number of combinations. It's still a lot with this many colors, but it feels like because it's not a massive set where you can do literally anything, because there's not like an orange or a purple or certain specific colors or every or every single shade of yellow available in the set that I have. It feels like unlocking secrets when I find mixes that I really, really love and that I'm really excited about. And painting with these watercolors just left me so excited to do it again. I really don't have anything negative to say about working with these paints. 
If you are the kind of person who prefers more granulation, I know that the entire Asaro range, which I believe is around 60 colors, there are other colors that granulate more than the ones I have here. I think even in the blues, I think I have an Indenthrone blue and not like an ultramarine by itself. The one color is mixed with the French ultramarine pigment, but I don't have that color on its own. So I have one color that's PB36, which I believe is cerulean blue, and I love that for the bits of granulation, and also the steel blue, which has the ultramarine pigment in it. There's some granulation there, but overall this set doesn't have a ton of that. But for me, it has the perfect amount in the colors that I want that to be present in, if that makes sense. I haven't been relying on granulation super heavily myself lately, so for me, this set is pretty perfect in that regard. I cannot wait to use these watercolors again and to play with them some more. I am so highly tempted to expand the range of colors that I have. I'm definitely going to be looking on Jackson's for a couple more colors to fill out the little palette that I have, as I'm really kind of in love with these paints. They just work perfectly for me. They're reliable, they do what I expect them to do, and they offer enough of their own unique qualities that it feels luxurious to use them. I'm really proud of this painting. It came out pretty much exactly the way I imagined it in my head, which if you're an artist and you paint, you know that that does not happen very often, at least for me it does not. Um, I don't always have a clear mental image of what I want, and even for this one I didn't know exactly how I wanted it to go, but the painting feels the way I wanted it to feel, and that feels like a major triumph. And I know that if I had been working with art supplies that didn't work very well, or paints that weren't cooperating with me, I wouldn't have been able to achieve what I wanted out of this piece, and I was. So I'm really grateful to these watercolors for that. I'm also really grateful to the company for sending me some beautiful, beautiful paints to try. I can't recommend them highly enough if you're able to check them out. You can get them in sets or in individual tubes.
Thank you all so much for joining me today. You can find this original painting as well as prints for this listed on my shop. If you are on my shop in early November, you may find that orders are going to be a little bit delayed for a couple of weeks as we have some things going on and which I'll hopefully be able to talk to you guys about very soon. But um, yes, so orders may be a little bit delayed on my shop starting in November, but thank you for checking it out and being there anyway. And of course, as always, a huge thank you to my patrons over on Patreon and my members here on YouTube. I really do hope that you will check out these watercolors and this company as it's been a joy to work with them. And I will talk to you all next week. Okay, bye-bye. <laughs>